either one of these little extensions here. So you can have some undefined trig values. Okay, now again, if you're like, Mr. Naylor, what do you mean a trig value? A trig value is like an answer to one of these six trig functions. It's those fractions. It's x over r. It's y over x. All those answers are called trig values. So some of them can be undefined. Did you get the first one, tangent of 3 pi over 2, to be undefined? Okay, and then you should have gotten the third one, the cosecant of 2 pi, to also be undefined. So if you get a zero in the denominator, as I kind of say, that's kind of like being at the, the wrong place at the right time. But if you discover a zero in the denominator, it's undefined. Okay, and there's many other examples. All you had to do was find a way to get zero in the denominator for that fourth one. Do you have any questions on undefined? Okay, it can happen. And then that second one, um, I always like to use this as an opportunity to make sure you, well, not make sure, but to kind of help you see something about tangent. Now, tangent is supposed to be y over x. Well, look, that's exactly what you already have here. You already have sine being y and cosine being x. So it's kind of like saying, what happens if I put sine over cosine? What happens if I put positive over positive? So we end up with a positive tangent. Each one of these is already tangent because this is y over x, sine over cosine. So obviously a positive over a negative is going to be a negative tangent. This one you should have discovered is positive as we have a double negative. And then the last one is another negative. Okay, so sine, cosine is just y and x, but now tangent is both of those put together. Literally, y over x, sine over cosine as a fraction. Anything to add to that or something? Any questions? Are you sure? Okay, these kinds of things, you'll see, they'll keep popping up. I'll actually do some stuff with positive and negative with today's lesson. Did you, how'd you make out with, the, I guess, like the weekend homework? 1 through 11, any concerns there? Are you okay with number 9, getting like the square root of 29? Number 9 should have the square root of 29 throughout its answers. Is there anything that you were kind of wondering about from the homework. All right, well, then we're three for three. Everybody's good with each of these items. I'm good if you're good. Let's continue down this path. It's actually kind of a circular path because, well, it has to do with, of course, the unit circle. We're finding trig values. You're going to find out today that depending on what I give you, depending on kind of where we start, we are able to still end up at the same place. That place is a sketch that involves a triangle that has X, Y, and R. Okay, now from the homework, you guys were given a point. And that helped you to get x, y, and r. Now, I'm giving you, well, I'm giving you a trig value. It's kind of like I'm giving you one of the six answers. Right now, what I'm wondering is, can you figure out what sketch we could draw? Okay, now I feel like, I don't know. I haven't seen this before. You're right. You haven't seen this before. But if I tell you that cosine is negative three-fifths, I'm telling you something. It, it has to do with what we did Friday. Just let you chew on it a little bit. But I definitely want to hear from you. 
So cosine equals negative three fifths. What sketch could be deduced? All right, so let's hear from you. Brandon? Um, the X would be negative 3 and the R would be 5. Okay, so the X would be negative 3, the R would be 5. That's a 100% true statement. How'd you get it? Well, uh, cosine is X over R. Good. Okay, cosine is X over R. And so that's exactly what we've been given. We've been given X and R. So what sketch can be deduced? As we go kind of the next step, what triangle has a negative three as X and an R value of five? Like, do you picture it? Great. So how'd you get that? So notice she's solving for kind of like the missing X, Y, R. She's solving for the missing dimension. By the way, I use the Pythagorean theorem. It's really good. Use Pythagorean theorem. So again, what sketch can be deduced? Now, the sketch is a triangle that has a negative x value, that has a r value, and now we've discovered it has a y value. Okay, and kind of the order of this discovery doesn't really matter. The fact is, is that all this is true. And it's all true because of the original given. When we said cosine equals negative three-fifths, everything these students have said is true. Actually, some other sketch would be true. Like, we, I, I could stand up here and say to you, yep, that sketch would also have been true. Okay? And it would be a triangle that has a negative x value and an r value of five. I want you to look at that triangle. I want you to look at it carefully because it satisfies the given. X is still negative. R is always positive. Nobody's really said that, but it sounds like you guys are, remember that from Friday. So, hey, X is still negative. R is five. Basically, we have a triangle. Now, you should be saying, okay, Ms. Nellar, but uh, the Y value is different. Yeah, the Y value is going to be negative four. If we go back over here to this Pythagorean theorem, it's definitely true that when you take the square root of 16, if we back up a step here, when you take the square root of 16, that you could argue for plus or minus 4. If you're like, why didn't that happen on Friday? Remember, Friday we were just finding the R value. But like, there's no reason that dimension right there can't be negative. There's no reason this sketch can't be legit. Okay, now you might not realize this, but we need more information because we can't have two triangles. Okay, we can't have two triangles because ultimately we're only going to end up with one set of answers. So we need more information. I didn't give it to you because I didn't want to sort of overwhelm you. But let's say that that piece of information, the sine of theta is greater than zero, was like part of this given. Let's say that it was part of the given. Now, what this would allow you to do is to erase one of these triangles or only have thought of one of them in the first place. So what does it mean that sine is greater than zero? 
kind of fancy talk for a simple idea. Sine is what value? Say y. It's the y value. So that's fancy talk for the y value is positive. Okay, so if the y value is positive, then we can go back to, we can just think of the original, the triangle that we kind of thought of first. Okay, again, because the y value is positive. Okay, just let this sink in a second because everything that's on the board is true based on everything that was given. Now, if you're saying, sounds good, what do I do with this? Here's the part you're going to say, the same thing we did on Friday. Now, you could find trig values. The truth is you could find all six of them. Okay, you can make like another list of six answers. To kind of save a little bit of time, let's say I said, hey, find the tangent. Let's say I said, hey, find the cosecant. I just want you to realize that we now could find any of them. And by the way, how's sort of the little memorization going on those? The sooner you memorize, the better, okay, because then you can kind of practice as we go through here. Remember, tangent is y over x. Let's, listen, I have a y and x value. It's kind of like kind of what this whole problem is based on. Now, you get 4 over negative 3, but why don't we just write that as negative 4 thirds? Oh, by the way, tangent is negative. Remember from your little warm-up, tangent is negative in this quadrant. So that's good. And then how's cosecant? Do you remember its definition? It's r over y. It's just a straight memorizer, okay? It's r over y. But uh, I got an R value of 5, I got a Y value of 4, bingo, I've got the cosecant to be 5 fourths. Is this a little bit like Friday? Yes. You're, gonna, you're supposed to feel that way. Um, does it kind of have a little bit of a new twist to it? Yes. We're starting with some different givens. I want to show this to you. I spent a little time making it. It's up to you if you want to jot it down. It's supposed to help you just kind of see that we're finding trig values, but now you're given a value. To be given a value is to be given one of those fractions. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to still make a sketch. Okay, now once in a while kids will kind of say, do I need to? The answer to that is you really should because it's going to help you with positive and negative. Okay. So I highly encourage you to make a sketch. It's going to help you with positive and negative. Okay, so when you make that sketch, the quadrant that you put it in, this not to sound like a broken record, but the quadrant you put it in is going to help you with positive and negative dimensions. Okay, now remember, R is always positive, And that'll help you to to get that sketch the way it's supposed to be. Once you're done looking at my little whatever here, this little sort of diagram, this little chart, here's another one of these problems. It's a little more mathy. Okay, we've got a statement here. It's a trick statement. It says cosecant equals negative 2. Okay. A lot of our goal here is going to be to try to interpret that as a triangle. So cosecant equals negative 2. And then it says that theta is in quad 3.
we're not in a rush here. I just want to give you a little time to actually think, especially about what this means. What is true? What sketch could you draw if the cosecant equals negative 2? Now, I would still love to hear from you, but I want to show you something because I kind of want to give you like the okay for this uh, sort of this method. If you know that theta is in quadrant three and if you're like, how do you know that? It's just a given. Okay. I kind of like made that up. So if someone gives you that right now, you actually could with 100% certainty draw the triangle as long as you draw the triangle the correct way. In other words, the radius always comes out from the origin because it's always like a distance. Okay, so you'll learn that the triangle that you draw is always going to look the same. In other words, the radius is going to come out from the origin. And then it's going to have those legs, right? It's going to have like this, this uh, vertical leg. It's going to have this horizontal leg. I want you to start to realize that our goal is to get the numbers on this triangle. So how's it going? Cosecant. Cosecant. Equaling negative two is really like saying what parts of this triangle. What's the definition of cosecant? It's R over Y. We saw that over here. I'm just trying to get you to remember that. Wait a minute. Two numbers, right? Fraction, R over Y. One number. So what can we do to our negative two? You can assume that one is the number. Good. I love the way you say that because it's totally true. You can assume that one is in the denominator. Anything else sort of rubbing you the wrong way? Anything kind of making you cringe? So if R has to be positive, then... Okay, now, what we just did here, we're not like changing the rules. Okay, you guys smart kids, you know that 2 over negative 1 is the same exact thing as what we were originally given. We're just making it fit. We're just making it fit the concept. So R is not allowed to be negative. Now, I don't know how you're doing here on a Tuesday morning, but this is kind of neat because look, look, Y needs to be negative. Like I'm talking about this sketch right here. The Y value needs to be negative. It goes down. Okay, and this is going to be one of the main things for you guys to process. It's not hard, but that's, this triangle is saying to you, hey, you, Y needs to be negative. <clears throat> What else is this triangle saying to you? What's it saying about X? Okay, it's saying, find me, find X. Find X. Now, there's two ways to find X. One way is to remember something from a couple ages gone by and that is that this triangle is a one two one two the other way is to plug it into the pythagorean theorem because pythagorean theorem never lies as long as you plug it in correctly now careful 
Okay, you know, you get four, subtract one, you get three. Oh, so x equals one, two, root three. Good. Remember hearing those three numbers kind of in like a little sentence? Okay, it's, it's all right to be honest. Uh, I'm sure that you talked about it in geometry, but you must have been absent that day. It's a one, two, root three. Not, what? One, two, root three. Pythagorean theorem says so. Mmm. Ah, ouch. One, two, negative root three. Ding, 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 ding. One, two, negative root three. Are you, are you on board? Now, what just happened right here? Again, this is like going to be one of the main things for you guys. You're like, what thing? It's making sure that the positive and negatives make sense. Now, if you're like, so I just kind of put it there. Well, hold on. First of all, this could have been plus or minus, so I could have either one. And then this position, this position, this negative position says so. Okay. Now, all is good. We can find, I didn't actually put this down as the directions, but what if I had said to find, um, I don't know, we could have found anything, that, to be honest. What if I said find sine, cosine, and tangent? Again, we could have found all six of them. We could find one of them. The world is yours. You can find any trig value that you want. How's it look? And sine is negative one half, cosine is negative root three over two. Now tangent starts out as negative one over negative root three, but let's clean up a little bit. Let's get the square root up to the numerator and we get root three over three. Of course, positive. Positive, right. Tangent's gotta be positive when you're in that quadrant. How are we doing? Okay, we're finding trig values. It should feel a little bit like Friday. We're just starting a little differently. Okay, we're just starting a little differently. That's because I'm giving you a trig value. I don't want this just to be math talk. If I give you a trig value, I'm telling you one of these original statements. Okay, I'm telling you. Okay, you're interpreting it so that you can find other trig values. Here, kind of treat this like, uh, you know, have you figured this out? So here's this, I'm giving you that the secant of theta is root three and The sine of theta is less than zero. Can you interpret it as a sketch?
Can you just tell us something that you know? I'm not honestly looking for the final answer, but can you go back to like, okay, this is something I knew. This is how I started. Liam, just something you knew. Okay, so I'm hearing R and X. How'd you know R and X? Good. Okay, so we know that R is root three. We know that X is one. Something you know. How about you, Camry? Something you know. Not necessarily the final answer, but what else is true? Okay, now listen, th this is the good stuff. Like, this is exactly what you should be thinking. Now, you say they're both positive. So, to help you out here, you're right. X is positive. If X is positive, you're over here. Okay, now, again, why are we over here? Because that's, that's where positive X. R is always positive. R is always positive. So, could we have this triangle? Sure. But, and I know some of you are at this place, and you should have been at this place where you should have been like, or could we have that triangle? Now, here's what you want to realize. Both these triangles have a positive X, okay? And that's a key statement that Cameron said. R is always positive, so both of those are still okay. Something you know. This is kind of like the, you know, sort of the, the big, okay, the concluding idea. So what does this mean? Oh, uh, that Y is less than zero. So that means Y is good. So are we getting to the point that we're identifying the triangle that we need? And so sine is negative, Y is negative. That's got to be the triangle. Okay, now here's the cool thing. That triangle matches with everything that was given. You can start to put that stuff on there. Um, I, I highly recommend that you label the triangle with the actual values. Did you go search for the Y value? One, two, root three? Not so fast. Okay, that, that lesson that you're absent for, the teacher would have said the hypotenuse has to be two. Okay, so for one, two, root three, the hypotenuse has to be two. So this is not a one, two, root three, but you can find out what it is. Okay, and I know some of you got to this point, but let's make sure everybody's good. Uh, be careful, always be careful with uh, algebra. Don't want to make a silly mistake here. It looks like you're going to get root 2. You're going to get root 2. Of course, plus or minus root 2. So that way you can choose the right one. You can choose the negative root 2. And then you can find your favorite trig functions. Questions? Any questions on the whole thought process behind getting to this sketch? Positives and negatives. I've given you three different scenarios on purpose. So, I mean, I hope you kind of say it depends, right? Yep, it depends. It depends on what you're given. It depends then on what quadrant you end up in. Of course, at this point, it's just um, sort of happy times. You do have to be careful here. Sine is negative root two over root three. Um, that's a square root party. That's a square root party. You got to multiply by square root of three. Try to remember your square root rules. Root two times root three is root six. Okay. Let's not lose the negative, but we get root, negative root six over three.
Cosine is root 3 over 3. Tangent. Looks like it just works out to just be negative root 2. And you should write it as negative root 2. You don't shouldn't really leave the 1 right there. It's getting a little more fancy, isn't it? Let me take you back to a nicer time. Those two circled answers, what do they mean? It's going to be a test question. Okay, just relax right now. Um, it's not a test question, but do you realize what these two numbers are? That's the x value. That's the y value of this theta or this theta when it intersects the unit circle. Okay, that point right there.